The principal new grammar in Lesson 5 of Croy's Primer of Biblical Greek has to do with the definite article and the adjective. And some of the basic principles that we have to bear in mind when dealing with uh, articles and adjectives um, are the following. First, agreement. Does a given article and or a given adjective agree with a particular noun in the sentence? generally in close proximity, uh, in gender, number, and case. Do they all have the same gender, number, and case? Um, this is prerequisite to thinking about an article or an adjective actually describing, going with, that particular noun. The second question to bear in mind is that of the relative position of the adjective to the noun, assuming agreement. We have to inquire, is it in attributive position, such that the adjective simply describes the noun as part of a larger sentence, or is it in predicate position, such that, in effect, the article, um, adjective, and noun form a complete sentence, where the basic structure is, the noun is adjective. So we'll keep this in mind as we work through these practice and review uh, uh, sentences, until hopefully it becomes second nature to ask these questions. Number one, dikaios kai hagios hokurios tu uranu. In this sentence, we see two adjectives, dikaios and hagios, both appearing in the masculine nominative singular. We see an article along with a noun, which together. Uh, are also masculine nominative singular. Then we see an article and another noun, uh, which agree they are both masculine genitive singular. So in this sentence, we know that the second noun, tu oranu, is describing the first noun, hokurios, in some way. The Lord. Which Lord? The Lord described by heaven. The Lord of heaven. Then we have these two adjectives uh, agreeing with ha kurios in gender, number, and case, and falling within what we would call predicate position, because we have the adjective block followed by the article, whoops, followed by the article, followed by the noun. Article, sorry, adjective, article, noun is a basic predicate position pattern. So we would translate this all together. The Lord is righteous and holy. So we get to our answer. The Lord of heaven is righteous and holy. In the second sentence, now we find, Legusin hoti, pisteusi to lago tu theu, erga de kala uk echusin. Um, this time, we find some verbs in the sentence. We have legusin, pisteousin, actually pisteousi, and echusin. Um, we might recognize instantly all three of these have the third plural ending, meaning that some they is the subject of all three of these verbs. They say, they believe, they have. And then we have this uk thrown in, so Actually, our they have becomes they do not have. Now, what else do we find in the sentence? We find the word haughty following legusi. Haughty, which can mean that or because, but after verbs of saying or hearing or seeing or knowing, haughty generally means that. It introduces the content of what is said or seen or heard or known. So legusi haughty pisteusi they say that they believe. Then we find two other nouns here. To lago tu theu. Each noun has a matching article. Uh, the first noun, lago, with its article, are in the, the uh, masculine dative singular. The second noun, with its article, tu theu, uh, are masculine genitive singular. So once again, we have an instance of a genitive noun, tu theu, describing another noun, 
to sorry to logo. So uh, to logo date of case. Uh, we could take this as indirect object or location or instrument. Uh, however, we do. Tu uh, Thayu will describe it. So, the word of God or God's word. Um, the verb pisteousi or pisteuo generally is followed by a noun in the dative case. So, we could think of to lago really as the object, simply the direct object of pisteousi. We could translate this they believe the word of God. Or we could finesse it a little bit the way Clayton Croy does in his answer key. They believe in the word of God. That's really just a matter of English idiom there. So whichever way you go is fine. Erga de kala uk echusin. They do not have. Now erga and kala uh, agree in gender, number, and case. They're both neuter, they're both plural, and they both could be nominative or accusative. Um, in this case, it doesn't seem likely that erga, works, is the subject of the verb. Works do not have. Do not have what? Well, there's nothing left. There's no object to fill in there. Plus, the, the they of uk echusin is probably the same they as in legusin and pisteusin, and works tend not to speak, nor do they tend to trust. So we'll take erga as an accusative here and not a nominative. I'm obviously over-communicating about the thought process just to lay it bare. Um, if Kala describes erga, um, it agrees in gender, number, and case, we have to ask about the position, attributive, or predicative. We don't have an article here, which is uh, generally determinative in showing whether <clears throat> whether something's an attributive or predicate position. But we can surmise easily that it is attributive anyway, because there is a main verb. And where there's a main verb in the clause, there's not going to be predicate position at the same time. So they do not have noble works or good deeds. Number three, he gay agathe hoti ho curios teis gays eche dulus agathus. As we survey this sentence, we see he gay, a noun with its matching definite article, both feminine nominative singular. We see an adjective agathe, again feminine nominative singular. We see a clause introduced by hoti. Um, so what do we have so far? Hege agathe is, is one unit. It all agrees in gender, number, and case. What position do we find? Well, article, noun, adjective is a predicate position formula. So we would translate this uh, as a full independent clause. The land is good. The land is good. With that uh, before it, this haughty can only mean because. It will introduce the cause, the reason why the land is good. The land is good because hokurios teis geis. Hokurios teis geis. Uh, here we have kurios in the nominative, so it's going to be the subject of this haughty clause. And then we have gay in the genitive, taste gase in the genitive, making taste gase a descriptor of kurios. So the lord of the land, the lord of the land, and here we have uh, a main verb, eche. This is echo, I have, with a third singular ending, so he, she, or it has. Uh, in this instance, the nominative, ha kurios, supplies the he of he has, because the lord of the land has, has what? Dulus agathus. Both of these words are masculine accusative plural, so they agree, this noun du, dulos and this adjective agathos. Um, and without an article, 
we can't automatically see what position it is, but since again we have the main verb eche, we know that this is not going to be predicate position within this clause. It'll be simply good slaves as the object, the direct object of eche. Thus the land is good because the lord of the land has good slaves. He says servants, it really is slaves, and there is a difference, socially speaking, between the servant, who is uh, potentially a free person, and the slave who is, in Aristotle's um, terminology, a living tool. All right, number four. Ha fuios ha protos didaske ta micra tekna grafein. First thing we might notice is, this is a question. So our final uh, rendering of it should be in the form of a question. Hophios um, hoprotos. We might see just visually at this point that these uh, four words all agree in gender, number, and case. They are all masculine, nominative, singular. Thus, as a block, this functions as the subject of the sentence, in particular, of the verb didaske. So, hofuios, hoprotos, all in agreement. What position? Well, article, noun, article, adjective is a, an attributive position pattern. So, the word first is describing the sun. The first sun, and then didaske, from didasko I teach, didaske with the third singular ending. He, she, or it teaches. Again, in this instance, the he is specified by hafuios. Uh, the first son is teaching. Is teaching who? Whom, I guess. Ta mikra tekna. Ta mikra tekna. Again, you can basically visually see, we can't, we can't rely on that for too much longer, but we can uh, in this lesson, that these all agree in gender, number, and case. They're all neuter, plural either nominative or accusative. So technically we could ask whether or not uh, this block represents the subject of the sentence, but we know it's not because ha fuios ha protos is unambiguously nominative and it has already established itself as the subject. Thus ta micro tekna must be taken as the accusative neuter plural and the direct object of didaske. Um, it's an attributive position. Article, adjective, noun is the other standard attributive position formula. So the first son is teaching the little children, um, and he's actually teaching them a skill to write. Now answer in the form of a question. Is the first son teaching the little children or the small children to write? Number five, piste he cardia tu micru dulu, ala kakata erga tu kuriu tu oiku. All right. Um, here we have uh, two independent clauses uh, conjoined by the word ala, but a, a contrastive conjunction. Piste he cardia tu micru dulu. Piste he cardia. Um, as we analyze each of the three words here, we see that each one of them is feminine nominative singular. Now, this is an instance where you can't just go on the last letters of the word and, and, uh, and tell whether something agrees or not. Cardia is one uh, form of a feminine nominative singular. You remember the alpha-based ending, pattern followed by many first declension nouns. Piste and he, the eta ending, um, is also a feminine nominative singular ending. Uh, pistos is an adjective that follows the eta endings, and we know that the definite article also follows all the eta endings. So even though uh, they don't visually agree, they do grammatically agree, and they're in predicate position. Um, are, sorry. Adjective, article, noun, predicate position, forms a complete thought. The heart is faithful. 
faithful is the heart, to sound more poetic, and in effect to stick to the word order more closely, although there's not really any value in that. Faithful is the heart to mikru dulu. Now visually this is all screaming out agreement. We'll want to check this eventually, but they are indeed all masculine genitive singulars. And uh, the adjective mikros is in uh, attributive position. Article, adjective, now is an attributive position uh, formula. So mikros is simply describing doulos. It's on the genitive case, so this block is acting as a descriptor, in this case of the noun cardia. Faithful is the heart of the small slave, or of the little slave. But, kakata erga tu kuriu tu oiku. If, um, you might be able to catch that the syntax of the second half of the sentence is exactly parallel to the syntax of the first. So we again have uh, three words in predicate position. They all agree in gender, number, and case. They're all um, neuter, plural. Uh, in this instance, we're going to take them as nominative. Uh, and being in predicate position, they form a complete thought. The works are evil, or the works, the deeds are wicked or ugly. This block of genitives tells us whose works are ugly. The works, and these are actually uh, two nouns in the genitive, it's a, a string of genitive nouns. Uh, this one, kuriu, is a noun modifying erga. This noun, oiku, is a noun modifying kuriu. So the works of the master are wicked. Which master? The master of the house. In number six, we find Dikaya he basileia, kaipistoi hoi anthropoi teis basileas. Again, um, as we analyze these, we find they're all in agreement. They're all feminine nominative singulars. These are also all in agreement. They are all masculine nominative plurals. As we look at the position, the relative position within each of these blocks, we find that each is predicate position. So we have complete thoughts. The noun is adjective, and the noun is adjective. So the kingdom is just, or the kingdom is righteous, and the people are faithful. Then we have this, this, whoops, this one added block, teis basileas, a noun in the genitive case that will be acting as a descriptor of anthropoi, the people of the kingdom are faithful. Question seven. Hoi nekroi uk echusin doxan, ugar blepusi, Ta agatha teis zoes. In this instance, we don't. Well, I won't cut to the chase. I'll talk you through it. We have hoi nekroi, an article and an adjective, but we have no noun in this clause agreeing with uh, hoi nekroi. Uh, so we have to conclude, aha! Hoi nekroi is actually functioning as a substantive here. And this is a very important use of the adjective, the substantive, where the adjective itself stands in for a noun, as in the, the famous the good, the bad, and the ugly, where all three of those adjectives, good, bad, and ugly, stand in for uh, nouns, the good people, the bad people, and the ugly people. So here, uh, we would translate this, it's in the nominative, so we know that this group will be the subject of the sentence, the dead, as in the dead people. The dead uk echusin. Echusin, another straightforward verb in the, um, uh, with a third, sing uh, sorry, a third plural ending. Uh, they do not have, 
and the they is revealed in the nominative plural hoi necroi. The dead do not have. What do they not have? This is uh, given to us in the form of another noun in the accusative case, the most common case for showing direct object. The dead do not have glory. Then the second half of the sentence introduces the reason with the particle gar, the reason why the dead do not have glory. For u blepusi. Blepusi, another uh, a verb with a third plural ending. For they do not see, that is, the dead do not see, ta agatha tes zoes. Ta agatha is another article and adjective combination agreeing in gender number and case. It's neuter, plural, either nominative or accusative. Um, in this case, we, we know it's going to be accusative because we already have our subject of these verbs back here, hoi necroi, the dead do not have, the dead do not see. So that will resolve the ambiguity of ta agatha in favor of the accusative, neuter plural. But there's no noun that goes with this. So we have another case of a substantive. Um, the good stands here for a bunch of good entities. Um, and since it's neuter, that little bit of grammatical information, the fact that it's neuter, requires another word in English to really bring that across. They do not see the good things. What good things? Uh, well, this genitive noun, tes zoes, will describe the good things, the good things of life. When you have substantives, um, you need to consider whether there's more information in the Greek than you can uh, represent simply as the good in English. In this instance, the fact that it's neuter actually encodes more information, and you need another English word to bring that information across. For the record, hoi necroi, uh, you know, being masculine, is either referring to a masculine group or a mixed group. So simply the dead do not have glory works just fine. If this had been hi necroi, the, you know, the, the dead as a feminine nominative plural, to bring that extra bit of information, the feminine gender, into English, we would need to translate it not simply as the dead, but as the dead women. Uh, we need that extra word in English to communicate that uh, bit of grammatical information that is uh, evidence to the Greek hearer of high necrai, um, but is not evidence to the English hearer merely of the dead. Sentence eight. Ho protos anthropos lege te ecclesia, ala he ecclesia, thele acuen te sponeis tu eschatu anthropu. Well, again, scanning through the sentence, you see a block of nominative masculine singular words. So the subject of the sentence, at least the first clause of the sentence, then we say a verb, lege, with a third singular ending, he, she, or it says. Then we see another noun with its article in the dative feminine singular. Again, the endings don't look the same. You've got the uh, eta ending here and the alpha ending here, but they're both feminine dative singular endings, so they agree. Uh, what will we do with this first half of the sentence? Ha protos anthropos, adjective in attributive position, it's simply describing the noun. The first man, or the first person, is speaking. Uh, dative uh, case here, indirect object, location, instrument. We could really translate this either as indirect object or location. The first person or the first man is speaking to the assembly or in the assembly. Allah, but, introducing a contrastive clause now, he ecclesia, 
Hmm, feminine nominative must be the subject in this clause of the sentence. Thele, a verb with a third singular ending. She wishes, uh, he, she, or it wishes. In this case, the, the he, she, or it is provided in ecclesia. Um, so, but the church wishes akuing, an infinitive filling out the meaning of thele. Wishes to hear. To hear what? Tes phonés tu eschatu anthropu. Tes phonés, just an article and a noun. In the genitive case, generally we think of that as description, but we remember that a kuo can take its direct object either in the accusative or the genitive, which is what we have here. So the uh, assembly wishes to hear the voice. Tu eschatu anthropu. This time the genitive gives us information about the voice. Uh, it's a qualifier. And we have an adjective in here agreeing with the article and noun. They're all masculine genitive singulars, and it's an attributive position. So it simply uh, modifies this noun, the voice of the last person. So that's how we get to our answer there. Hoi Adelfoi Hoi Pone, sorry, Hoi Adelfoi Hoi Pane Roy, U Lambanusi Tain Alethean Tu Theu. This may be getting more straightforward now. We've got our basic verb in the middle. Um, uh, lambano with a third plural ending, negated. They do not receive. They do not take. Here, receive will work out better. Here we have a string of nominatives, all of them masculine plural nominatives, all in agreement. Article, adjective, article, noun, attributed position. Hence, the wick, sorry, article, noun, article, adjective. My bad, went too fast. Um, so we have the brothers, the wicked ones, hence the wicked brothers or the evil brothers, do not receive. And then we have tenalethean, a noun in the, in the accusative case, and tuthayu, a noun in the genitive case. The genitive noun modifying the accusative noun. They do not have the truth of God. In number 10, Hai he merai ponerai, ala ho oikos tu kuriu hagias. Here we have um, article, noun, adjective, all agreeing. They're all feminine, nominative, plural. And they're in predicate position, so they form a complete sentence in effect by themselves, a complete clause. The days are evil. The days are wicked. But, and here we have to look at this last bit, we have article and noun agreeing. They're both, uh, sorry, masculine nominative singular. Then we have another article and another noun. These are both masculine genitive singular. And then we have an adjective hanging at the end, it's masculine nominative singular. So what we actually have here is predicate position between ha oikos and hagios, because they all agree in gender, number, and case, and they fit the pre predicate position pattern, article, noun, adjective. In the middle, sorry, it's broken up by another noun in the genitive case that is also describing oikos. So, we would take this as a unit, the house of the master, or the house of the Lord, is holy. The house is holy. And then we also describe house with of the Lord. The house of the Lord is holy. That's a little tricky because Clayton has broken up the predicate position between ha oikos and hagios, but it still applies. This doesn't um, uh, interfere with the possibility of either having predicate or attributive position uh, with ha oikos. He eschate basilea uk eche namus kakus. In this sentence, we have um, 
three words in agreement. These three are all feminine, nominative, singular. In attributive position, this block functions then as the subject of uk eche. Namus kakus, uh, these are both masculine accusative plural. They agree in gender number and case. They can't be in predicate position because we already have a main verb in this clause. So we're going to take it as attributive position, with kakus describing namus, just like eschate describes basileia. The last kingdom does not have bad laws. Number 12. He mikra adelfe u thele blepen ta technon ta nekron hogar thanatas u kalas. And here we have Clayton at his best coming up with his sentences. He mikra adelfe just like he as eschate basilea, three words agreeing in gender number and case, feminine, nominative, singular, in attributive position, functioning as the uh, subject of this verb, thele, which is itself negated. So the small sister or the little sister, u thele, does not want doesn't want what? Blepain, this um, infinitive to see, again fills out the meaning or provides the object of thele, the verb, uh, does not want to see. Now, blepain, being an infinitive, can also have its own objects, its own direct object or indirect object. In this case, a um, a direct object, ta technon, ta nekron. All four of those words agree. They're all masculine, singular. They could be nominative or accusative, but they're not going to be nominative uh, because we have our subject in the sentence already. They'll be accusative. All of this together is the object of blepain. And nekron is in attributive position with technon, article, noun, article, adjective. So dead just describes child. So the little sister does not wish to see the dead child. Then in the second part of the sentence, we get the reason for this. Um, ha thanatos u kalos. In this sentence, ha thanatos and kalos all agree in gender, number, and case. They're all masculine. Uh, nominative singulars, and um, uh, they can all be taken together as sitting in predicate position. Uh, article, noun, adjective. The presence of the gar does not interrupt predicate position. The presence of the u does not interrupt predicate position. So, ha, thanatos, kalos, predicate position. Death is pretty with the extra words u, sorry, u and gar, for death is not pretty. All right, that brings us through the practice and review. There are also two New Testament sentences that I asked you to look at. The first one from Romans 7, 12. Hoste ha namas hagias, kai he entole hagia kai dikaya, Kai agathe. Hoste is a word that you would have to look up in the vocabulary uh, after the exercises. Uh, we could tr translate that as so then, because it introduces a result. The important part of the sentence, though, is what follows. Ha namas hagias. Three words, an article, a noun, and an adjective, all agreeing in gender, number, and case, all masculine nominative singular, in predicate position. Hence, the law is holy. So then, the law is holy. And, he entole hagia kai dikaya kai agathe. Again, all of these words, except for the kais, of course, agree in gender, number, and case. These are all feminine nominative singular. So, 
Um, yeah, so they all go together in some way, and they're in predicate, predicate position. If we take these three adjectives as a block, hagia, kai dikaya, kai agathe, which we can because they're all equal and they're all linked by kais, we have our, um, article, noun, adjective block, all agreeing in gender and memory case. So the command or the commandment is all three of these things, holy and just and good. In the other New Testament sentence I set for you, uh, we have kai edon tus ne krus, tus ne galus, kai tus mikrus, a short uh, snippet from Revelation 20. Kai edon, edon you have to look up in the vocabulary, but it means I saw, so and I saw tus ne krus. Here we have an article and a noun, sorry, an article and an adjective, agreeing in gender number and case, but there are no nouns to go with it in anything that follows. We actually just have more uh, articles and adjectives. So we're going to take necrus as a substantive. Uh, it's talking about entities, talking about people, probably, without using a noun. I saw the dead, just like I saw the good, the bad, and the ugly. I saw the dead. Uh, and then tus megalus kai tus mikrus, um, is really set in apposition to the dead. Oh, uh, what dead? Well, the, the great and the small. They're all substantives, uh, substantive adjectives. I saw the dead, the great and the small, among the dead. English to Greek is always a little bit uh, trickier. Uh, but let's think together about how we would move this English sentence into Greek. Are the holy men receiving the good things of the land? So we know we're, we're going to want a semicolon at the end to make it a question mark. Holy men receiving. Holy men are doing the receiving. So that holy men will be the subject of this sentence, and we'll want all of that in the nominative case. We'll want to find um, the appropriate um, um, noun to use here, adjective, and of course the definite article. Uh, actually, there are a number of ways you could do this. Uh, you could take anthropos, although generally that means human being and not a male person, but you might occasionally find anthropos referring to guys. So we could start with anthropoi. Um, that would be the masculine nominative plural form. And then we want to add an article and an adjective, all in attributive position with anthropoi. So we would end up with hoi, hagioi, let me just type in, anthropoi. Uh, huh, there we go. Hoi, hagioi, anthropoi could be one way we put it. Or, hoi anthropoi hoi hagioi would be one other way we could put it. We could also use a substantive here and just basically go with the article and the adjective functioning sub substantively. So we could eliminate anthropoi entirely and simply have hoi hagioi as the holy ones. So however you care to do that, any of those three ways. The holy men are the ones receiving. So lambano means I receive. In this instance, we have a they receive um, um, a person and number. So the form here we'd want is lambanusi, the third plural. Since the guys, the holy men, they are doing the receiving, lambanusi. The good things of the land. Well, you know, there is really no word for things in Greek. There is kind of, but it's, it's not used that way, the way we use things. So what we're going to look for here, or what we're going to do here, is take another adjective and make it substantive. Good, agathos, is the best choice for that. We could also go with kalos. And since we want to represent the good things, as the object of the verb, we're going to want 
uh, the accusative case for the object, we're going to want neuter plural for the adjective to represent things. So we end up with ta agatha. And then of the land, um, clearly uh, of the land is describing good things. So in Greek, we accomplish that by taking the land and putting it in the genitive case. And that gives us the same uh, meaning as of the land in English. Hence, ta agatha teis geis. And we stick on our question mark. If we really wanted to do this more like a Greek speaker, we'd stick the verb first, and then the subject, and then the object. Lambanusin hoi hagioi ta agatha teis geis? Or hoi hagioi anthropoi ta agatha teis geis? In the second sentence, the house is beautiful. This kind of sentence in Greek is going to be accomplished without an actual verb for is. Instead, using an adjective, an article, and a noun, all agreeing, all in predicate position. So um, we'll want nominative uh, singulars for everything. Ho oikos is masculine, so we'll also want a masculine, a nominative singular form of an adjective for beautiful. Kalos is our best choice here. Really not agathos in this case. Kalos is the one that has also the sense of beauty. Hence, kalos ha oikos is what we come up with, or, if you wish, ha oikos kalos. Either way. Um, but, Allah, the heart of the master of the house is wicked. What we have to dis discern here is, ultimately, the heart is wicked, is the spine of this sentence in English. And of the master and of the house are just getting in the way. So how would we render the heart is wicked in Greek, same way as the house is beautiful? Uh, article, adjective, uh, noun, all in agreement, but set in predicate position. Wicked could be represented by either kake or ponera. Mm -hmm. The heart, he cardia. So they are all in agreement. All feminine nominative singulars, and they're put in pre predicate position. Kake, he cardia, or ponera, he cardia. And then we'll want the master in the genitive case to make it describe heart. We'll want the house in the genitive case to make it describe master. Just a string of genitives, each noun describing the one behind it. Ponera he cardia tu kuriu tu oiku. Now, number three, the dead do not know the truth. The dead uh, we're going to uh, put into Greek using an adjective substantival, like the good, the bad, and the ugly. The dead. And the dead are the, uh, or the dead is the subject of the verb know, except it's negated, do not know. So for the dead, to make it the, um, the subject, and of course it's plural, we're going to go with hoi, Nekroi. You all don't have to worry about getting the accenting right. Of course, I do, because, you know, I look like an idiot if I don't after 20 years of doing this. But you all don't have to, to stress over that. Hoi nekroi. Do not know. Uh, the verb for knowing is ginosko. Um, the dead is a third person plural entity, so we're going to want the they form of ginosko, and that is um, ginoskusin, or ginoskusi. Now, it's not that the dead know, the dead do not know, so we're going to negate this with an oo. Hoi nekroi u ginoskusi. They don't know what? The truth. So uh, the truth is the object of know, the direct object, so we're going to want to put the truth in Greek, in the accusative case. They do not know tain aletheon.
for they do not hear God's voice. We could flesh that out a bit. They do not hear the voice of God. Um, for uh, calls for the word gar in Greek. Uh, the word gar doesn't ever show up as the first word in a clause, so we're going to put something before it. They do not hear. The verb for hearing is akuo. They, third plural, akuusen. But it's not that they hear, they do not hear. So we want to negate akuusen with u. Ugar akuusen. Or akuusi. They do not hear. They do not hear voice. In fact, the voice, since it's God's voice, it's a particular voice. So they do not hear the voice. We're going to want to put the voice either in the genitive or the accusative because um, um, the verb akuo can take its object in either the genitive or accusative case. I'm going to stick with accusative because it just feels right here. Tain phoneme. Of God. Now we might be led just to do this. Theu, we want we definitely know that we want it in the genitive case. But as I said in Greek, you almost always find the definite article in front of Theos. So that would be my answer to number three. The evil one wishes to destroy the faithful women, but they trust God. The evil one. Well, this is going to be handled again, as in number three, by a substantival use of an adjective. And the evil one wishes, the evil one is the subject of the verb, so we're going to want this in the nominative case. And of course, there's only one of them, so singular. Let's go with ha. Pane, pane, ros, the evil one. Ha pane ros. We could also go with ha kakos. Wishes. The evil one is a he or a she or an it. So we're going to want the third singular form of fellow. The evil one wishes to destroy. Um, the the infinitive in English to destroy completes wishes just as the infinitive in Greek will complete uh, this thought. Wishes to destroy the faithful women. Now, we're obviously going to handle this also with another substantival adjective using a form of pistos, which means faithful. But Clayton says we need to communicate in Greek that this is a plural group uh, of female entities. So we're going to use a plural feminine form of pistos, and we're going to put it in the accusative case because it's the object of destroy. So faithful women, accusative case, feminine, plural, accusative of the faithful. So tas, uh, pistos is what we will go with. But, so they're not going to end up getting destroyed by the evil one, but they trust God. I trust pisteuo, they trust pisteuousi. So, pisteuousi. And God will be in the accusative case, theon. And as I said, it's always just done up with an article. They trust ton, theon. Whoops. And that takes us through all the exercises for lesson five. Hopefully, if you had any questions, you will find them answered in this video. If not, um, uh, please feel free to use email to get any specific questions uh, answered.